Hello. Love that you can see me in the background. This is the only place in my bedroom that light doesn't only hit half my face. It's so awkward, but I can't do anything about it. I have been seeing everyone share their favorite items of 2023. I love hearing what people like. It just has inspired me to make one for myself. Without further ado, let's get into it. 2023 has been such an up and down year in terms of finding my style. I had the resolution of doing skincare every night, trying to put more time into dressing up and getting ready in the morning. All that to say, I've discovered a lot of brands this year. Oh, oh. <coughs> Let's start with skincare. I was using products for a while that were making me break out so bad, but I just didn't want to waste them. So I kept using them, which was so dumb. But now I really feel like I've found what works for my skin. So I'm gonna just take you through my skincare routine, my favorites. This is the best cleanser. It's Alpha H Balancing Cleanser. Most mornings when I wake up, my skin is still moisturized and hydrated from the night before. So I really just want like a light cleanser to revive my skin in the morning and prep it for my morning skincare hair it's conditioning it's super soft on the skin it smells amazing it feels amazing i love this so much next in the summer i worked with hija on a shoot in copenhagen during fashion week they gifted me all their products i had always heard the best things about korean skincare and so i was super excited to be able to try their products have been my favorite a day does not go by that i don't use their serum in the morning my favorites are first of all their matcha mask it looks like i could eat it it's super hydrating i love a good mask little self-care moment this shackifies me in the best way another mask i love is this tlc sukari baby facial by drunk elephant when i tell you your face feels like a baby's bum after this mask i am not just playing on the name it actually gets the job done it's the best exfoliant mask i've ever tried niacinamide heart leaf calming serum i use every single morning should i be using this in the morning or at night i don't know so i probably should read up on that but i just love the feel of their serums. I have two favorite moisturizers. One is for summer, the Heja Vegan Rice Ferment Gentle Probiotics Cream. It's super light, super hydrating, like all their other products. It's just such high quality. And then in the winter, Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. As you can see, it has been used in this household, not only by me, unfortunately. I have a couple people in the house who like to use my things. Side eye. It's the most hydrating. I'm wearing it right now. When I wasn't really into skincare, I would have this issue, especially in the winter, where I would apply moisture and I swear I would still have dry skin. I think it's because I wasn't using serum, but also just the quality of the moisturizer. That is the thickest moisturizer, yet it doesn't feel claustrophobic on the skin, if that makes sense. It doesn't really clog my pores or anything. It just feels so good. And then I love this Virgin Marula Luxury Facial Oil by Drunk Elephant. I do not really like oil usually. I don't like putting it on my face, that's for sure. It clogs my pores. It just, it's not for me. <laughs> but when I'm sick, this is the best remedy you know when you like blow your nose and it gets all red this is the only product that moisturizes my nose my irritated area and doesn't irritate it and then lastly tatcha indigo cleansing balm phenomenal i have always been kind of skeptical about these things you know there's always something left there's nothing left after i rub this on my face it melts your makeup off it's just the best when you have a cleanser that takes off your makeup without leaving you with burning eyes and whatnot so i would expect no less from tatcha moving on to makeup i'll start with lip it's real simple the MAC lip liner in chestnut. As you can tell, it's pretty banged up because I bring it with me everywhere. I don't go anywhere without it, honestly. It's just the perfect shade for me. I'm wearing it right now. It makes me feel pretty. For some reason, lip liner has just become an inherent part of my morning routine, I guess, or of my get ready routine. The favorite of the year. This goes in my bag I bring to school with like my tampons and everything. That's how much of a necessity it is. My other two lip favorites, which I know are kind of basic, we have the Road Lip Peptide Treatment. I jumped on the bandwagon as soon as they came out. It's the perfect mix between a lip balm and a lip gloss. It looks really nice on the lips. And then of course, Lip Glow Oil Dior. This is the shade Rosewood and I also love Mahogany, which is a bit more brown. The applicator is just amazing. Moving on to the second most important part of my makeup. I'd say blush is probably the only makeup I consistently do. I love the way it looks. It's easy. It's quick. Number one favorite is Milk Makeup. I have always been a fan of their blushes. This is in the shade Quickie. I'm wearing it right now. You can't really tell. This lighting washes me out. I love a dark blush. I love a berry color on my cheeks. It's gorgeous. Then Good Weird. I just discovered in the past few months the application just makes it easy for people who don't really know how to do makeup well, aka 
me this blush it's very hands-on it's super moisturizing so it leaves you feeling super glowy it's like a moisturizing balm but with a bit of a tint i think they even have it non-tinted and then lastly this hourglass ambient lighting blush sublime flush sometimes when i do my makeup it's just very oily greasy put a little bit of powder on top just tames a little and this color is gorgeous lastly we're gonna do with the eyes need to get a new concealer especially for months when i am pale as a sheet but i've been using the glossier shape tape maybe shoot i don't know their concealer it just really gets the job done low coverage is that the right term i have also been loving the good weird cold brew under eye so it's kind of like an eye cream with a bit of a tint super moisturizing and i just put it on all my eyes when i don't feel like doing makeup but i look like a zombie and it really just vivifies my eyes lastly mascara push-up lashes by charlotte by Charlotte Tilbury. I love it because the applicator is very hard. It's not like a bushy brush where you probably will get those little clunks of mascara. I know that's something people like. I like when my lashes are perfectly separated. This is really the perfect mascara. Last but not least, I've started doing my brows this year after I saw Viola doing it in Copenhagen and she was using this Refi Brow Sculpt Lamination thing. Basically, you have this clear oh, brow gel and then you shape it with this tool. This is is amazing if you have no idea how to do your brows. I've never gotten my brows threaded, nothing. I tweeze my unibrow. Other than that, I've never gotten my brows done and I've tried brow gels before and hated the way they made my brows look. This has given me hope, so highly recommend. Moving on to my favorite perfumes. I have quite the roster of perfumes. Feel like with age, I start collecting things that a younger me could care less about. I had the same perfume for like five years in high school. The Chanel Chance, that pink one i was obsessed with it i am just always on the prowl trying to find my signature scent i have two perfumes that i am absolutely obsessed with that i need to buy which are the loeve ella perfume and the mezzo margella replica beach house it's a perfect summer scent newest favorite joe malone wood sage sea salt Oh, so good. I got it in a small size to test it out on myself and I adore it. I feel like it's one of those perfumes that I can't tell if it suits me, but I love how it smells. Next one is On a Date Maison Margiela replica. This is literally what I wear when I go on dates. It's a perfect nighttime scent and it's probably the perfume I get the most compliments on. It really fits with my pheromones somehow because no other perfume gets me as many compliments as this one does. It's grapes and roses. And last but not least, the Dior Lord. Mm. This is definitely more sophisticated. It really smells clean and fresh. One of those scents that just make you feel refreshed and amazing. And then on a similar wave, my favorite deodorant, Salt and Stone. I just finished their Saltal and now I'm trying the Bergamot and Hinoki. It smells so effing good. This is the only natural deodorant I've ever tried that has worked for me. With natural deodorant, you have to accept the fact that you have to reapply. There have been nights that um, have not ended in my favor when I've worn this just because it's natural deodorant. Like, you can't fucking control it, but I think it's worth it. Also, I just feel suffocated when I wear anything that has aluminum. I'll do it when I need to, but I'd really rather not. I think this is a great alternative. On to hair care. I've never really cared for my hair at all because I just never really had to care. I've always had very thick hair. The only time I've hated my hair was when I caught it, oh, cut it into a bob. Worst year of my life, confidence-wise. Hermit for a year until I can stand to look myself in the mirror. I do not miss being an insecure teenager, but I've just never had to care for my hair because I had never dyed it, but this year I dyed it for the first time. Just highlights, nothing crazy. You can probably tell my roots a bit darker, and so I had to start caring because when I got my hair dyed, I was surprised by how it actually changed the way my hair felt, and I was like, okay, no, I want my hair to feel like it did before. First of all, for like the pre care i actually finished it but the shuamuha hair mask the hydration one the orange one i'll link everything down below i forgot to say it's the best hair mask i would do it before i showered and i wouldn't use conditioner i use conditioner every now and then but i would rather do a hair mask before it has the same effect my hairdresser has told me i need to get another another pre-care thing i love is this aveda scalp solutions it's the spray the right one is actually a brown bottle and i have it in my bathroom but i'm too lazy to go get it basically like just spray it 
oh my god that would have been really annoying you spray it at your root i don't know if you're supposed to but i do it before bed the day before i shower i shower in the morning because i want my hair to dry fully naturally and if i do it before bed i sleep on wet hair and it looks like shit and my hair takes approximately five hours to dry because i have so freaking much of it it's just good for dandruff and for dry scalp which i have a lot of in the winter unfortunately i actually have this also which i have been loving it's also from aveda and it's the scalp solutions exfoliating scalp treatment i put it in before i shampoo and i massage it into my scalp all aveda products smell amazing you know the aveda scent if you know it you love it eucalyptus fresh and gets rid of all that dry scalp disgustingness which i cannot stand and is another reason why winters are <sighs> brutal and then to go with that my favorite shampoo that is not my shampoo my favorite shampoo has been the shuemuha the hydrating urban moisture shampoo which i also finished and this is now the one that i've been using i love shuemuha this one is definitely more like conditioning shampoo i always do a triple wash i can't leave my shower unless i've washed my hair three times i just can't do it i would feel dirty if i didn't i don't know why it's just the way my brain works for that so when i use this shampoo i have to shampoo with other shampoo first that's more soapy however i will say that i really like the way that this leaves my hair smelling and feeling but my absolute favorite is the orange bottle and then for the aftercare i have been using this for a while it's the Kerastase serum universel it's bougie this is like the bougiest hair product i own it's kind of like those caviar little pebbles as you can see i don't know if you can see but i've used quite a bit of it i do two pumps and i put it into my ends and stuff you only notice obviously a difference over time and i've been using this for a year and it has made my hair just feel a lot more luscious and shiny if this isn't within your budget which is totally fine instead i would get the jizu honey infused hair repair serum jizu is amazing it's also caviar bubbles i'm not a hairdresser i'm not a hair connoisseur i can't tell the difference there probably is one but i've been loving this as well it's the act of doing it that matters obviously the product too but i don't know i just i'm a simple girl i know i'm telling you guys about all these products i love but i would be happy with very simple products oh that's what's missing what the frick what i'm trying to say is you don't need the nicest product to have nice hair i took 25 paths to tell you lastly this hair oil Kerastase elixir ultime smells like heaven i love this it's a favorite it's a damn favorite and then lastly this is a hair tool i want to start playing around with my hair more in terms of styling it i just wear it down all the time and it's flat and boring but i've been experimenting with doing slick backs and now i'm hearing everyone say don't do slick backs because it makes you bald but on days where i don't want to wash my hair um i'd rather go bald than wash my hair honestly i use this brush it's the diane d8 115 and it's big i know a lot of slick back brushes are like half the size but when you have as much hair as me it does not cut it so if you have a lot of hair i highly recommend this even just to do a ponytail not slicking back i love using this brush it makes it look so sleek next i am going to do accessories i'm becoming more and more about the timeless stuff as much as i love buying fun accessories investing in timeless jewelry is where i'm at in my life two pairs of earrings that i've had for for over a year and we'll never get sick of and we'll never get rid of because they don't tarnish both by Missouri shocker their large bold hoops I think they're called are perfect and then these bigger ones these are perfect for going out they're super malleable super lightweight I don't have very sturdy earlobes if my earring is even the slightest bit heavy it just stretches and it looks hideous so these are the perfect earrings if you are like me two pieces that are so worth the investment for rings I like like to be a bit more funky sometimes i do have like my staple rings that i've had on my fingers for so long i have shown them so many times another favorite is the heirloom by missouri they have it in a couple colors it is just beautiful another ring i will have for my entire life and will probably wear for years to come another couple brands that i've been loving i've been a fan of la manso for years they're old collections i still wear them all the time i love this green one fun shape like this this is just iconic and i still think it looks fun I also love the black one. I just love La Manso. Then we have this brand which I'll link down below. They make these beautiful resin rings and I have a couple colors of them. This is the red one. Again, just a staple. Beautiful. Lastly, one of my favorite things this year and every year is looking through my mom's old jewelry, old clothing, and finding things that I like. This ring is one she has from like the 90s or the 80s. She has a couple of them that I have and they're just so much fun. My favorite bag this year has been this Fendi baguette vintage bags in general I've had it for months and I wear it every occasion I get pissed and broke I had one pair of sunglasses that I wore every occasion that I bought for seven dollars in Cape Cod in grade 
9 or 10. They are just so beaten up, so I need to find a new pair of staple sunnies this year. But some sunnies I've been loving. These Le Specs and this color in the summer when I'm tan and not a ghost of a human looks really good. These actually Sadie got for me. These are the best. Next on the accessories but kind of outerwear, Susmi's, this Barcelona brand, they have the coolest scarves. I love this one. They just have such beautiful colorways and they always add a pop to my outfit. I've been trying to dress thinking more about accessories while making my outfits. They're such a strong attribute to an outfit. Also Sandro Paris have really nice scarves. My favorite mitts have been these cashmere mitts by Aritzia. They are the softest thing and they keep you so warm obviously and they're just so pretty. Acne Studios also make the best outerwear. I love their scarves and the best hats. Tall and fun Obviously, I'm not wearing it properly right now because I don't want to fuck up my hair, but I saw it for the first time in Copenhagen back in February of last year So it's been almost a year that I lay my eyes on this beautiful hat I tried it on when I was with Henry and I was like, oh my god I'm obsessed with this hat, but I couldn't get myself to buy it because I don't really wear hats all that often But that's about to change That's about to change and Henry remembered and got it for me thoughtful boy We love I feel like this year is the year of accessorizing for me then clothing I'm gonna do like a closet tour soon. So I don't want to go through all my favorite clothes Also, I have way too many. I just have issues. I love thrifting like there's just so much I would want to show you. So I'm just gonna list out my absolute favorites of the year. Starting with winter stuff. I'm such an Aritzia fan. I'm Canadian, so naturally I'm a proud Aritzia girl. And they're a cashmere. It's not outrageously expensive. They have such beautiful colors. They just never disappoint. Aritzia cashmere has been up there for me this year. Also, Reformation denim is so good. These jeans, so flattering. Mom jean, but they're tight. Ugh, such an awesome discovery. I always knew about them, but I'd never really shot there and they also have such good sweaters and knits i wouldn't be stating my favorites if i did not mention realization par one of my favorite brands of all time i bought my first realization par item when i was like 15 and had been working a bit and had some money saved up realization par dresses are my summer staple not a week goes by that i don't strut around in a freaking realization par dress this is the newest edition i'm so Another favorite brand discovery has been Susa Musa, London brand. Every single thing that they put out, I want to be honest. And my favorite thing is this long red sheer dress. It is so flattering. Putting this on for the first time, I was like, oh, I don't know about the see-through. I'm not gonna feel that confident and comfortable, but oh my God, this is the most beautiful thing. I wore it on my back home party night. I've never felt so good. I also have been obsessed with their black sheer dress. I've worn it for Halloween and I. I've just worn it on nights out. I just feel like I'm in my 20s. It's now or never when it comes to literally strutting around naked under a dress. Might as well just embrace it. Another favorite with Jean. I feel like I'm always posting in their stuff. It must come as no surprise that they're one of my favorite brands. An absolute favorite piece this year has been this black skirt with the two bows. It's the most flattering. It sits perfectly on my hips. It goes well with everything. It's the perfect going out skirt. Another favorite brand is Danielle Guizio and this skirt. Like look at that glow. I wore this for New Year's. I wore this on a party bus. The most fun skirt. The inside is comfortable, even though it doesn't probably look it. I had heard so much about tank hair. I've seen everyone rave about their tank tops, which are in fact amazing. But my favorite piece that I got from them this year is this knit t-shirt. The color, the fit, the feel, everything about this is perfect. The quality of their garments is honestly unmatched. If you have your eye on anything tank hair, freaking do it because the quality, you will not be disappointed. Especially with knits, I always get the fear that they're gonna stretch out and just not fit the same but this one has been super consistent and I just wash it by hand in cold water and let it dry on a flat towel and it just has kept its pizzazz it's amazing I am just getting overwhelmed because I've never made one of these videos and there's just so many things so many brands that I freaking love so much that I want to shout out so I'm sorry if I'm blanking on some but these pants peachy den pinstripe pants they're the best thing they sit so well on your hips they're so cozy and sexy and beautiful and I love them so much I have a code Ava 10 for 10% 10 off your order. Now let's move into shoes really quickly. We'll start with my favorite boots this year, Alohas. I have a bit of a heel. It's giving Fry. It's giving Celine. I hate to say it's giving, but it is. These are also super comfortable. I walked around New York City in them for like a whole day and it didn't give me blisters or anything. Just a perfect staple boot. I've also been loving my Sambas. I know it's a basic. I also saw someone say that like they didn't want to buy Sambas because they thought it would go out of style. I don't think that these will ever go out of style. I will link these down below. However, 
whatever. I bought these on the drop or I actually made Henry buy them on the drop because I really needed to go to bed. I'm such a princess, I can't. I've loved these, they're so cozy and they look so cool, they go well with everything. I really wanna get the Wales Bonner collab, but they are ridiculously expensive. I'm just not really the type of person that will spend an outrageous amount of money on something that I could have gotten for like a normal price, if that makes sense. It was on sale for 280 bucks and is now going for a thousand. Like, who do you think I am, honestly? Okay, next, the Gani Ballerinas. I just, they're so dirty, ew, I need to freaking wash these. They're so comfortable for what they are. These should not be comfortable, but they are. I have worn these for long nights out. My feet have felt amazing. I've obviously broken them in now. These are just such a staple. They look so cool and I want them in every color. I absolutely need to get a new pair. I love them. Then these Peachy Den and Duke and Dexter loafers. The shape of these, a bit more pointed. Sometimes loafers are very like round, which I don't like the look of, but this is like super pointed. I want more Duke and Dexter loafers. Now, especially given how comfortable they are, I've been looking for so long, but never really found anything that I was like, wow, that's amazing. But these are chef's kiss. Last but not least in the shoes department, these brunch slippers. I have Ugg slippers. They're great, but these are better. Never thought I would say that. They have them in a more beige color, but I liked the brown. They keep my toes warm. They're just so cute. Quickly, gonna give some favorite house stuff that I've been into. I asked for this for Christmas, this season's diffuser. I still need to figure out how to make it work, but it's the cutest thing. As I get older, I want to collect things like this that I'll love to have in my living room or something wherever I live next. I'm so excited about it, which why am I excited about house stuff? This is quite new. Then we have my favorite candles. My favorite candle of all time is a salt and stone cedar and something candle, and I just finished it heartbreaking. And then my current candle is the replica by the fireplace, and it's the perfect winter scent. The replica candles are great. They're very pungent. And then this is kind of random. Should have put this in the beauty section. I just keep them on my nightstand because they're gorgeous. These are my favorite nail polishes. Licia Margarita. It's a shimmery green. So nice. I love also India, which is this beautiful red. They're vegan, high quality, good for your nails. I'm not someone who ever gets my nails done. I am much too lazy. Also, I did shellac this summer and it destroyed my nails. These are the perfect alternative and they're beautiful. Last thing are these plates. They are the most beautiful thing ever. I can make my pasta on here. I can make a small salad. It looks small, but don't be fooled. Do not be fooled. It fits the perfect meal and it's stunning. The colors, we have like a set of eight. All the colors are different. And the cherry on top is my mom makes these. So there's a sentimental element to it for me. I just think they're the most beautiful thing ever. She's so talented. I'll leave her Instagram down below if you guys want to check her out or commission any work. I don't think she sells them on her website, but maybe if she gets requests, she'll make a special batch for a special someone. I love these and I can't wait for my mom to make ceramics for my future house. Moving into like wellness, I'm just gonna share a couple products I've been loving. I am sick all the time. So this goes without saying vitamin C, vitamin D favorites because otherwise I'd be dead probably. Then Beekeepers Natural Throat Spray. It's not really like a cough syrup, it's just an immunity booster. I don't know why I did that. It just makes me feel good, clears up my throat, and it has honey in it, which is great for you when you're sick. Honestly, I'll do anything to not be sick because I'm sick so often in the winter. I'm extremely sensitive to temperature changes. It's actually insane. Also from Beekeepers Natural, I've been loving the bee pollen. You can't really tell because it's still pretty full because I use only a very small portion. Every time I make a smoothie, I put a little scoop of these in. It adds crunch, it adds sweetness. You know what they say about bee pollen? and wherever I can get help in that department, I'll freaking take it. Jokes aside, this is really good for you. I love this brand. On the same wave of immunity support, I have been drinking Gold Shroom Shield for years. If you used to watch my science study with me videos way back in the day, I would have this all the time. It's made with super mushrooms and raw cacao, cacao, mon dieu. How do you say that in English? Cacao? That's hideous. It tastes like hot chocolate, but it's supposed to help your immune system. I'm super healthy, I feel like, but I'm always sick. So something's out of whack. I think it's because I don't move, I don't exercise, which I really need to get on. It's just the prospect of going to the gym right now is really not um, an enticing one, but I know that that's why I always get sick because I'm really unhealthy in that sphere of my life. Anyways, the tangents, goodness. This is amazing, love gold. My favorite matcha is the gold matcha. I just tried it this year and it's so good. I also have always been a fan of David's tea, matcha matsu, 
that's what my mom buys. It's great, it's strong. Last but certainly not least, probably my favorite categories. I'm gonna start with books and then end with my favorite stationary stuff. My favorite books of the year. We'll go chronologically. The first book I read this year, I think, or maybe the second one is Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. By the way, I've talked about every book I've read pretty much except for the last few throughout my videos on exchange and everything and I go into depth about them. So if you want more of a rundown, check those out because this isn't fresh in my mind and I don't feel like I can give that great of an explanation, but I'll give you a bit of a synopsis from memory. It's this girl, Rachel. She has a very intense eating disorder. She works this office job, I think for influencer marketing or something. She lives in LA and you kind of see how she goes about her day noting calories down and thinking about food all the time. And then she meets Miriam who works at this Froyo place near her work where she starts going every day. And they start this friendship, seeing Rachel grapple with an eating disorder and seeing how someone changes that. It's an extraordinary book. I ate this up. It is kind of crass, but I don't mean that in a bad way. It's so entertaining. Next. Oh my God. We've got The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Kvosky. Whenever anyone asks me for book recommendations, this is the first book I suggest, especially for people who aren't super into reading. Basically, Charlie writes letters to this person we don't know who, and that's how the book is written in letters. He talks about making friends in high school and struggling. He finally makes friends with senior kids who are graduating, so there's that whole element of making friends that you're only gonna be around for a little bit. And then throughout the whole book and through forming these relationships and growing up, he uncovers elements of his past and remembers things that he had forgotten. It's just absolutely beautiful book. Even if you've seen the movie, the book is a thousand times better and I like that I knew the storyline. It didn't affect my reading because it's just not that kind of book. It's not the kind of book where it's like, oh, spoiler alert. It's just the way it's written. Amazing. I have two other favorites that I unfortunately do not have with me. First one is Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album. I've recommended it to every single person I know, including my sister who's reading it right now. That's why I don't have it because she's asleep. It's based on a true story. Mitch Album, his teacher was Maury in university. They had a pretty good relationship. Mitch graduates and they kind of lose time touch and then one day Mitch sees Maury on the news, finds out he's been diagnosed with ALS and then goes to visit him and they make it a ritual of having a class on Tuesdays where Maury teaches Mitch about the lessons of life. It's the most touching, amazing book and then I think about it, I cry. I've written a whole page in my journal about it. It really put a lot of things into perspective for me. I read it at such a perfect time in my life where I kind of needed a reset and to be reminded of the beauty of life and how lucky we are to be here and how important loving is and gratitude and everything like that and not getting caught up in the little things and holding on to bad feelings and emotions. Ugh, anyways, you have to read it. On a kind of a different vibe, Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers was my favorite fiction book of the summer. It's basically the story of Cleo and Frank who meet Cleo's 25, Frank's 41 or something. They meet, fall in love, get married. And so it's their love story. The way it's counted though is like a TV series. So it's such a page turner. You're so enthralled. Every chapter, you're seeing from a different character's point of view. So there's all these different storylines that intertwine. It's so entertaining and the ending is so good, which I was scared reading that book. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but just like, it's so f***ing good. And then my favorite academic book. So my favorite book I read for school was Brideshead Revisited. I have only been reading academic books in the past five months. So I wanted to at least give a shout to one of them because I thoroughly enjoy this by Evelyn Waugh. I wrote my paper for my class on it. It's the story of Charles Ryder who goes to Oxford and mingles with the aristocracy in the age of Saltburn. Such a relevant read. If you liked Saltburn, you're probably gonna like this. Have I seen Saltburn? No, but I can just tell from the trailer. It's a bunch of Oxford kids and like weird stuff going on and the idea of this big estate. This is basically all about Brideshead, this castle that Charles's friend Seb lives in. Social climbing, inheritance and all that. So it's a great book if you want something maybe a bit more challenging, more of a classic. Last category is stationery slash journals and all that. My favorite agenda, I I've had it for forever is this W. Maxwell agenda. I buy it every year at the start of the semester. I write my schedule. I highlight my appointments. Then I do my to-do list at the bottom. I highlight my assignments that are due when they're due in green. So it just keeps my life organized. They have a bunch of different colors. I've had it in black. I've had it in pink, purple, like they have it all. I explained how I organize my whole agenda in a journaling video from a while back. Obviously, I just posted the longest journaling video, but Nuna journals are my favorite. They sell them at Notabene on Park in Sherbrooke, and I know I'm gonna hate myself for saying this the day that I go looking for them because they sell out so quick, but now that I have one, I'm set for three years, so it should be fun. My favorite journal of all time, bullet journal. It's thick, you can like move it around, which I 
really like. I don't like hardcover journals at all. I cannot use them. I don't like them. They don't feel right in my hands. Same with paperback books. Don't like it. Do not like it. My journaling accessories favorites. First of all, stickers. I get questions on how I make my journal so fun. It's not because I'm good at drawing. It's not because I'm good at any of that stuff. It is all courtesy of these Bando sticker books. Every birthday, my mom buys me one of these and it's my favorite. It makes journaling so fun because I'm just like putting stickers everywhere and it looks so pretty. It makes such a big difference. I'll show you guys the inside of one. Really fun aesthetic for pens and whatnot mild liner highlighters for like everything my agenda my journal love these and then to draw titles and whatnot this is kind of the color scheme that i like again everything i'll try to find and link down below this also makes journaling so fun it's hard to do ugly shit when you have really nice pens this is coming from someone who's really bad at drawing lastly i have been loving these card sets one of my favorite papeterie shops in montreal is boucle papier on saint laurent they have such cute cards i always go there for birthdays and special events and whatnot and they sell these packs it's like 30 bucks for five or six cards such a good thing to have on hand also you save a bit because cards these days are crazy expensive that is all for my favorites i hope you enjoyed this thank you for sticking around mm -hmm.